Today is the cap on our year of absolute marvelous achievements. As I look at the faces of our largest graduating class in the history of Medgar Evers College, 1,000, 1,040 new future leaders. Graduates, I can only applaud your persistence, your absolute belief in yourself that brought you to this day of celebration. And it is a celebration. I am humbled and grateful to know that I and every member of the college community helped to make this day possible for you, your families, and your loved ones. We have gained much from your contribution to the spirit of our college. Your scholarship, your community service, your willingness to help your fellow students. It is with no hesitation that I say you have kept the legacy of Medgar Wally Evers alive and you will continue to bring his message of empowerment not only to our fine borough of Brooklyn, but to the world. It is because of you our current and future graduates, that we have been uncompromising and demanding the best. We want the world to know that we are ranked among the best in all that we do. So we are a great institution. We are proud of you and what you have achieved. During the past year, Medgar Evers College received a reaffirmation or accreditation from the Middle States Commission on Higher Education for 10 additional years without any conditions. We are proud of all of you. Our Department of Education was accredited with no conditions by the National Council for the Accreditation of Teacher Education. Give yourselves a round of applause because you are clearly in the right place and at the right time. You are graduates, you are our class act. Let me share with you that every single agency, every single organization, every individual that comes to, uh, that come to Medgar Evers College comes away saying that the same thing, they have never been on a campus that has more energy, more spirit, more dedication than uh, Medgar Evers College. I thank you for giving us the opportunity to be your vehicle of transformation. And I wish you much success as you forge ahead. To the graduating class of 2007, hasn't God graced us with a beautiful day today in your honor? And my gift to the graduating class of 2007 is I don't have a speech. I just wanted to say, <laughs> you don't have to be that enthusiastic. You know, I just want to say a word of congratulations to some folks who are here, your parents and grandparents and brothers and sisters and aunts and uncles and sons and daughters. You're graduating today, but in many cases, so are they in their hearts and in their minds. And I want to thank them for all you've done to make this graduating class possible. And speaking on behalf of all the graduates, we love you and we're going to love you more and more and more as we realize how much you've sacrificed to make this day possible. And I want to say to you, the graduates, you know this now, but you're going to know it even more in the future. You are so blessed to have been taught by one of the most sophisticated, erudite, and brilliant staffs and professors and faculties you're going to find anywhere. You're going to have many brilliant people on this stage who are going to give you advice. All I can say is that in some point in the not-too-distant future, you're going to be sitting in the waiting room waiting to get an interview for a big, important job. And you're going to look in that waiting room, you're going to start talking to someone else there, and they're going to say, uh, you know, I went to college at Yale or Harvard or Dartmouth. And they're going to say, where did you graduate? And if you're like Medgar Evers graduates in the past, what you're going to do at that point is you're going to pull your shoulders back, you're going to lift up your head, and you're going to say, I graduated from Medgar Evers College in 2007 in Brooklyn, New York and the United States of America, and I take a back seat to no one. May God bless you and God bless America. Thank you. It's an absolute thrill for me to be at graduation each year to uh, congratulate uh, all, all of you, class of 07. 
As we all know, Dr. Edison Jackson has steered Mega Evers College towards its position as the flagship of the CUNY system during his nearly 17 years as president. The student body here at Mega Evers and all Brooklyn are blessed to have Dr. Jackson as a community leader, an educator, an administrator, a role model, a leader. How lucky we are. And we thank him for his outstanding nearly two decades of visionary leadership and inspiration. As I look around at our graduates, I know that you have benefited from Brooklyn's creativity and unrivaled diversity of cultures, ideas, and expression. Let's face it, where else but Brooklyn can you go from Minsk to Mexico, from Poland to Port of Spain, from Fujian to France, from Haifa to Haiti, from Calabria to County Cork, and from Damascus to Dakar, and still be close to the outer borough, also known as Manhattan. <laughs> now graduates, today is your day. You've earned your degree, and not just any degree, but a diploma from Mega Evers College. So your future endeavors, whether in business, in art, politics, law, government, science, academia, are sure to be the very best. Because you are graduates, the creme de la creme. You're the strawberries on Junior's cheesecake. You are, you are the moby with the coconut bun. You're the mango chutney on the polori, and you're the icing on the red velvet cake. <laughs> Anything that any of us achievers we know is achieved because we're able to stand on the shoulders of those who came before us just across the street at Ebbets Field in 1947, that's 60 years ago. Jackie Robinson broke the racial barriers when he took his first bat first bat at the, in the major leagues with the Brooklyn Dodgers and changed the course of American history. We are blessed that he and so many others, despite the history of racism in this country, have reached the zenith of their God-given potential. Leaders like Ken Chenault of American Express and Richard Parks, as we know, and Rodney O'Neill, and the oil industry's highest ranking executive black executive CEO of Delphi Corporation, Reginald Davis of Wachovia, Carl Horton of a company some of you know, Absolute Spirits, and Fudge, chair and CEO of the huge advertising firm, Jürgen Rimmerkam, Pamela Thompson Graham, president and CEO of CNBC, John Thompson, chairman of software giant Symantec, and Oprah Winfrey, who doesn't have time for that nonsense between Donald Trump and Rousey O'Donnell and Barbara Walters, She's too busy doing right over in South Africa, building a school for the next generation of female leaders. And leaders like Justice Theodore Jones. You know, the first thing that Governor Spitzer did when he took office was to appoint Brooklyn's own Judge Jones, who now sits on the state's highest court. Congratulations. <laughs> and finally, how many of you know about Max Siegel? I bet you thought he was Jewish. Uh -huh, uh -huh. He's a brother, and he is, now, he is now president of Global Operations for NASCAR Auto Racing, which until now has been as white bread as it gets. <laughs> now, Brooklyn's best days are happening today and tomorrow, and I'm certain that you will all be part of it because you're going to make it happen. Because when employers see a mega Evers College degree, they know that you have attained an impressive academic achievement. You know that when you make it here, you can make it anywhere. All of you can be proud to say that you've not only received more than a world-class education at Mega Evers College, but a world-class education Brooklyn style. But beyond your obvious academic achievements, Mega Evers College graduates are unique. You know that. You're special. You have moxie, you've got pizzazz, you've got chutzpah, and you've got style. And most important of all graduates, you got the Brooklyn attitude. And because you have a degree from Mega Evers College, your skills and expertise will be in demand. One thing is true. The education you, get, you got here and your status as a feisty Brooklynite are a powerful combination. If success doesn't come that first time, get up and try it again. Two, give back. You get involved, vote, volunteer, and give that hand of yours to someone to help them move on up too. Work for world peace. It is every person's responsibility to move this world towards a future of peace and understanding and mutual respect. I always say, 
Brooklyn is the example of what the world could be because we shine as a beacon for the world to follow. And finally, one little note, stay in Brooklyn, please. Please, whether you were born in Brooklyn or around the world, I want you to choose to make Brooklyn your permanent home. We need your skills and spirits. There's not a better place in the world than Brooklyn to live, work, raise a family, or build a career. So be proud of your great achievements. Bask in the enormous pride you bring to your loved ones. Remember that you are graduates of a great, great school, Mega Evers, in the greatest city in America, Brooklyn, USA. Congratulations. It is now my distinct honor to present uh, the Chancellor's representative, Dr. Gary W. Moore, Vice Chancellor for our Student Development, who will bring greetings on behalf of the Chancellor. We are delighted that uh, Dr. Moore has joined us to represent the Chancellor. He is a tremendous, tremendous educator and a great friend of Medgar Evers College. Vice Chancellor Moore, would you please come forward? Good morning. Good morning. To my great friend and the great president of this wonderful college, Dr. Jackson, Trustee Bill, I mean Trustee Barry, sorry, uh, all of the faculty, honored guests, oh, and to you, the graduates. I am absolutely delighted to be here today. I would not have missed this graduation because I've, I've only been in New York about 11 months. And since I've been in New York, all I've heard about is the, is the Mega Evers graduation. And I can tell you it is everything I've heard. You know, we're here to celebrate you today, the graduates because you have achieved so much. Helen Keller says that life is either a daring adventure or nothing at all. Today you have a new opportunity to set course on a daring journey that will take you places that you have never been before. No doubt your education here at this great college has helped you develop into critical thinkers compassionate individuals and engaged citizens capable and willing to make positive contributions in your community, the state, region, and internationally. Your leadership skills will be called on often. Your integrity questioned, your intelligence challenged, and your commitment stretched to the limit. But to whom much is given, much is required. You are well equipped and you are up to the task. You have that guarantee from your president, Dr. Jackson. On behalf of the City University of New York's administration, I congratulate you and I wish you the absolute best in all your endeavors. Thank you. It is now my distinct honor to present the Honorable Trustee Philip A. Berry, a distinguished member, member of the Board of Trustees of the City University of New York, who will bring greetings on behalf of the Board of Trustees. You no, know, it's, it's really indeed and a pleasure to be here. At, uh, first, I want to give greetings to President, President Edison O. Jackson, to Borough President Marty Markowitz, Councilwoman Letitia James, Assemblyman Hakeem Jeffries, also to the Honorable Theodore T. Jones II, Vice Chancellor Gary Moore, all of the other honored guests who are here. Uh, you might remember Kenneth Cook, who is also was a trustee on the board, and he is now visiting us here. Thank you very much for coming. To the faculty, family and friends, and most, most importantly, to you, the graduating class of Mega Evers 2007 commencement. I am really happy to be here with you. And it really is indeed a pleasure for me to be here today to bring greetings on behalf of the rest of the Board of Trustees of the City University of New York. And you know what? What's good about being here is that this is really a very historic commencement exercise for Mega Revers. Many of you might know that you are part of a group. We are graduating 1,000 students today. 
1,000. Please give yourself a round of applause. That, that, is, that is excellent. Because Mega Rivers has grown to great heights, and you are going to be part of this illustrious alumni group. You know, I go a long way back with Mega Rivers. Uh, I was born in Brooklyn. My mother lived uh, just a few blocks from here on St. John's Place. My sister still lives there. Um, I remembered I used to walk these streets of Brooklyn. Uh, when the building wasn't here, I used to have a paper route. Uh, I remembered walking the streets of Brooklyn. This building wasn't here at all. The people weren't here. And now, Mega Evers is here creating a wonderful presence in the borough of Brooklyn. A wonderful presence. And you should really be glad to be a part of that formula. Not only do we have this building here, but we just built the business school across the street and we removed the Department of Sanitation. And sanitation is good, but it belongs where it belongs. And now we are going to put a science building there, science and technology building. That is extremely important. And you are a part of this formula. You are a part of this success. So yes, today's graduates really truly exemplify the theme of the commencement this morning. And what is that theme? It is power passion and possibilities. The power to have and create the hard work that brings about what you have done today. The passion to make your vision a goal and bring it into a reality. Bring the goal into reality and to create great possibilities for the future. That's what power, passion, and possibilities do. And so really, today is really your day. It's not my day. It's not anybody else's day. And it's also a day to remember the journey that you have taken. But the journey is really just beginning. You shouldn't look at this as the end. Your learning process is really just beginning. But you ought to take time to reflect on what you have accomplished. You have really accomplished a lot. Many of you have come from other countries. Many of you have, are the first ones in your family, as I am, to have a college degree. And we don't do this by ourselves, because what we do, we do because we stand on the shoulders of others who have come before us. And many of you stand on great shoulders, don't you? If you look about the audience, you will see your family. You will see your mother, your father, a grandparent. And all of us ought to be thankful for the role that they have played in our lives. Now, when I say thankful, I want you to really be thankful. So this is what I want you to do. Your, your parents and your, your loved ones are over here. Now, they may not hear this at any other time. So what I want you to do is to think about the name of that loved one. And then when I say go, I want you to say thank you, whoever, so that they can hear you and they can really appreciate what they have done. Are ready? Thank you. So now all of the family and friends ought to feel that support and, and feel that love. Because that love is very important. That love is very important. And so what I want to say as I begin to close is also this, that we really strongly believe in the mission of Mega Rivers, and all of you should believe in it too, and continue to support it. And that is that Mega Evers believes in creating success one student at a time. That is so important. And that means that each of you have a role when you leave here today to continue to create success in others. Your role continues. You want to continue creating and living out that mission so that it becomes a reality. And all of us especially know that none of this could come about without leadership. And that leadership has been exemplified by the highest level by President Edison O. Jackson. And we really are extremely appreciative of that. He has done not only a lot here in Mega Rivers, he has not only done a lot throughout the borough of Brooklyn, but Edison O. Jackson brings this mission, brings his caring and concern throughout the New York State and also throughout the country. Also, a great measure of your respect, and don't forget this, has to go to the faculty who are here, the fine faculty who have helped you, who have mentored you, who have tutored you, who have supported you, who have pushed you so that you can get to the points where you are now. 
I still remember the physics teacher and the African American uh, professor that I had in the year. Oh. Goes bad. Goes bad after a few years. But you know what? You will remember it because it is important to your success. And so we thank the faculty here for the hard work that they do over and beyond the call of duty. Because they don't just do this for a salary. They do this because they are committed and because they care about each and every one of you. You can't buy commitment. Commitment is something that you have to feel internally. So as I begin to close, I want to say this. Be proud of yourselves. Celebrate yourselves. Celebrate this day and seize this day. Carpe diem means to seize this day because this day is yours. And remember that you will continue to take this school as you take yourself to new heights. You will take that vision to new heights and continue to create the type of reality that is going to make this world and also this barrel, which I am a part of. I was born in Brooklyn, uh, Marty. Uh, you didn't mention my name there, but, <laughs> but I, I feel very strongly about Brooklyn. There is nothing like the Brooklyn style. There is nothing like that attitude. And no matter where you go, where you live abroad, you will continue to take that with you. Take it with you. Seize the day and enjoy yourselves. Congratulations, ladies and gentlemen. It is my honor and privilege to introduce to some and to present, present to others a great friend of this college, a great friend of this community, a distinguished jurist, a great humanitarian, and a great scholar of the law. 
please come forward and let us welcome our commencement speaker, the Honorable Theodore T. Jones II. Thank you, Dr. Jackson. I, uh, I'm afraid that you all are going to be a little disappointed when you find out how short this speech is really going to be. <laughs> and that's because when you follow speakers like Borough President Marty Markowitz and Dr. Philip Berry, I am privileged to be able to say that many of the things which I had thought about reviewing with you have already been reviewed. <laughs> but let me just take a minute to recognize a couple of people who maybe have not yet been referred to, who happen to be friends of mine and who happen to be great supporters of this institution. The first is an old friend in my former assemblyman, Roger Green. Roger. Good to see you. And there was, there's another person here on the faculty who was very helpful to me in preparing for this day, and that's Fontaine Davis. I think he went somewhere. Dr. Jackson. Members of the Board of Trustees, Provost, Dr. Charlotte Phoenix, my friend, members of the faculty, parents, children, friends, and supporters, and of course, last but not least, those of you who make up the graduating class of 2007. Good morning to all of you. I am uh, I'm very proud to be here to speak to you today, not only because I'm a resident of Brooklyn, but because this institution means so much to me. I want to start by congratulating you, Dr. Jackson, on the wonderful job that you have done in placing this unique institution on the cutting edge of academic and social innovation. Your commitment to excellence as well as your sensitivity to the diverse culture and aspirations of this community which you serve is the yardstick by which other institutions in the CUNY system are measured. Given the remarkable diaspora which you, from which your students are drawn, Africa, Asia, Europe, South America, and of course the Caribbean, you have, through this institution, drawn upon their diverse cultures to broaden the experience and goals of both faculty and students. We all know that through your leadership in the establishment of such programs as the Caribbean Research Center and the Male Development and Empowerment Center, the targeted needs of this particular community are both addressed and met. These and similar programs are nationally recognized as forward-looking projects which focus on the real social conditions of your students. I am particularly proud to be involved with one such program, and that is the joint program which Medgar Evers has established in connection with my alma mater, the law school at St. John's University. This program is conducted in partnership with the law school's Ronald H. Brown Center for Civil Rights and Economic Development. And it's named, in case some of you don't know, it's named in honor of the late Ron Brown, who was a graduate of St. John's Law School and who went on to become the first African-American Secretary of Commerce, having been appointed by former President Bill Clinton. Ron tragically died in an airplane crash in 1992 but the program was named in his honor. And it's a testament to his spirit and his legacy. Its broad purpose is to assist students from this school, Medgar Evers, to enter into and be successful in the study of law. It's a joint effort by both schools, and I'm proud to serve on its board of directors. 
Doing so gives me an opportunity to share my experience and knowledge in the furtherance of this valuable project. Thank you. Before I go on, let me just take a second to congratulate again all of you graduates in reaching this important milestone. I know that you've been through a lot to make it here today. And lest we forget, let me once again recognize and congratulate the parents, spouses, children, relatives, friends, and significant others who have sacrificed and given their love and support to you graduates during these past few years. I am sure that most of you would not be here today were it not for that encouragement from your family and friends. The degrees which are about to be convert, conferred belong collectively to you all. Having said that, let me just call for one more brief round of applause in recognition of a job well done not only by the graduates, but also by those of you who helped to make this day possible. Thank you. I don't have to remind you graduates of the sleepless nights and worry about grades and exams and the general anxiety of the last few years. But even with, even with that hectic schedule, during the time that you're here at Medgar Evers, as with most schools, you reach a sort of a comfort zone. You get to the point where you know what is expected of you and you know how to deal with it. Now starting today, when you leave here, you're gonna move out of that comfort zone. You're gonna move out of that familiar, if hectic routine, because now you're about to start on a brand new journey. You're gonna be reminded once again how uncertain things can become when you start something that's brand new. But with your education and your experience, I'm confident that you'll be able to make the right choices. But as you leave that comfort zone, there are a few things that I want you to consider. The first and most important is never ever to lose confidence in yourself. In facing new challenges, one of the most important things in this or any institution can give you is that self-confidence. Confidence that when the time comes, you will be able to make the right choices and the right decisions. And with each choice or decision that you make, you will be relying on the experience and on the education which you received right here at Medgar Evers. As you go forward, many opportunities will present themselves and you will be called upon to weigh the facts, make the best decision that you can, and move on. I urge you, don't be so concerned with the outcome that you can't perform the act. Have confidence and let your education help ensure that you can move forward with certainty. Never doubt yourself. Believe in yourself and your ability. Don't become a victim of what we call paralysis of analysis. Let me show you what I mean. I have a nephew named Lacey. And Lacey is a clothing designer. And he called me one day and he said, Uncle Ted, I, I have a, a new job offer. He says, I have a job offer at a well-known fashion house. And indeed it was. It was P. Diddy. And Lacey said to me, he said, Uncle Ted, I want to fax you a copy of this employment contract so you can look at it for me, if you please. He says, I don't know whether to sign this or not. So he faxed me the contract. I looked it over very carefully. It looked like a great offer to me. And I called him back and I said, Lacey, I looked at your contract. I said, what's the problem? He said, I don't know, Uncle Ted. He said, I'm nervous. I've never done this before. When things like this happen and the money looks like this, I'm afraid I might be getting ripped off. <laughs> I thought about that for a minute and I told him, listen, Lacey, this offer is so good that if you don't take this job, I will. The moral of that story, of course, is that you must be encouraged 
to make decisions and not stand on the sidelines. Your education, the education which you've received right here, has prepared you to make that decision, so do it. Whether it's a job or a lifestyle, or the purchase or sale of real estate, or any one of a number of things that may happen to you in your daily life, don't be afraid to decide because you might be wrong. Remember that even the most carefully thought out decision is seldom absolutely right or wrong. Let me give you a quote. You're free to choose, but the choices that you make today will determine what you will be in the tomorrow of your life. The second thing I want to remind you of is this. Never ever lose sight of who you are. This degree which you're about to receive will give you many advantages. One of the most important advantages is that it will help you through this education to know yourself, to know who you are. You can't make a decision if you don't know where you're going. And if you don't know where you're going, you don't know where to start. Don't ever let other people tell you who you are. Only you know that. If you know yourself, as I'm sure you do by now, you will not be influenced by the attempts of other people to define you. In our society, as you know, it can become very easy for the media, through ads and shows, to try to tell you what you are and to try to tell you who you are. Education is a wonderful thing because it opens your mind and it makes it impossible for people to lead you around for their benefit. Coming from the proud tradition of this institution, you know better, you know better than to let yourself be defined by some television sitcom or some hip hop video. Nobody trying to sell consumer products can tell you what to think and feel, especially someone who has no understanding of our customs and our values and our beliefs. The beauty and value of this college lies in its unique ability to fortify you with self-confidence and pride and to give you the pride in diversity that will make you comfortable in your own skin. The third thing is this, never forget to separate those things which are important from those things which are distractions. As you know, many of the things which find their way into our conscious thoughts are very indeed significant facts. Facts which we need to consider when we're making important choices and decisions. Other things are completely irrelevant and meaningless. They have absolutely no significance in the mental equation which goes into making an important decision. Does it really matter to us if Lindsay Lohan was arrested in California for drunk driving? Is that important or is it a distraction? But it is, an, is it important to us to know what our senator is thinking on the issue of public health care? Important or a distraction? Is it important to know what your children are doing in school? Is it important to know who made the finals on American Idol? I think you're getting the point. As you move forward, folks, keep that distinction in your mind so that you're not sidetracked with meaningless facts and events which will be of no help to you in making important decisions. And finally, let me repeat what's already been suggested before, and that is this. Never ever forget your obligation 
to reach back and help those who are still behind you. Some years ago, and this wasn't part of my bio, but I can share it with you now. I taught, I taught school right here in New York. I taught the eighth and ninth grade. I think today that would be called middle school, but I'm going to date myself and tell you that in my day, it was called junior high. I had a class of kids who at the time were known as, for you education majors, CRMD. And those initials stood for children who are retarded and mentally defective. Can you believe it? Now, my kids were not retarded, and they weren't defective. They were considered, as frequently happened in those days, they were considered behavior problems. The class was so disruptive that on the first day, the principal called me to his office and he said to me, don't worry about teaching, just keep them inside the room. A decision had obviously been made that my class could not function in the larger school community. They were rowdy and they were restless and they were troublesome. In short, they lived up to exactly what was expected of them. Nothing. I set out to change that culture. And in the very beginning, I announced to my students that I was going to make it my personal mission to get them out of that special ed class and back into the mainstream school. But I let them know that I needed their help. I needed their help to prove to the school administration that they could be just as smart, just as mannerly, just as attentive as any other student. And I worked very hard to build their pride and self-confidence and to help them rid themselves of the negative self-images to which they had been subjected over the years. I wanted to teach them to believe in themselves. I wanted them to develop the confidence to break the mold of other people's definition of them. I'm proud to say to you today that they developed into the most self-controlled and self-restrained class in the entire school. And true to my word, each time I felt that one of my kids was strong enough and had developed enough confidence, I would go directly to the administration and I would lobby hard to have that child reass reassigned to the mainstream classes. Over a period of about five months, I reduced the size of my class by about one half. And the kids who transitioned out were more successful and less disruptive than the kids in the classes to which they were reassigned. They ended up, folks, setting a great example for the rest of the school. And I'm proud to say that I learned more from them than they did from me. I was reminded of that experience some years later when, as a Supreme Court judge, I was designated to establish what was referred to as a juvenile offender part, right here in Brooklyn Supreme Court. And the purpose of this special part was to consolidate the serious indictments of young offenders, that is to say, youngsters between the ages of 14 and 17, so that they could all appear before one single judge, me. You have to understand that for a teenager to be indicted, he or she must be charged with a very, very serious offense. Usually it was murder, or rape or robbery. And as judge of the part, it was my job to ultimately decide which of these young people could be salvaged, to decide who should go to jail and who could best benefit.
from a non-jail program. The job required common sense, it required street sense, and it required experience. I'm a court of appeals judge today, highest appellate court in the state. But I was no stranger to this project because I'm a city kid and I grew up in some pretty tough and exciting neighborhoods myself. Bed-Stuy, South Jamaica, pretty exciting and I'll admit to you right now, I was part of the excitement. <laughs> I never had any major problem with the law and in many ways I suppose I was lucky. But you can understand that looking down at these kids on a daily basis, I couldn't help but frequently think, there but for the grace of God, go I. As I worked with these kids, I realized that it still boiled down to the same old thing, the same thing I'm telling you today. The ability to manage your life without letting the media forces define you and dictate your actions. If you take nothing else from this day, please take the self-pride and the confidence that this institution has worked so hard to give you and make it the theme of your life. Congratulations. Good luck. God bless you all. It is my distinct honor to stand with you this morning as your senior class president. When I started Medgar Evers four years ago, I knew I wanted to be up here on graduation day. And here I am. 
I extend my gratitude to the Student Government Association for selecting me as senior class president this year. Like many of you, I'm a first generation college student. Therefore, I would like to take this opportunity to thank my family for supporting me in my endeavors throughout my college years. And I'm sure that the graduates share the same feelings about their families. Without their love and support and discipline, many of us would not have been at this prestigious moment in our lives. So, can I please get a round of applause for all the family members who are here with us today. For weeks, I've pondered the contents of this speech, questioning what pearls of wisdom I would leave with each graduate here today. It was very important to me that this speech wasn't too long because most of us has been here since 8 a.m. Therefore, I'll keep it brief in my endeavor to leave a substantial body of knowledge with you all today. Your degree was earned through hard work and dedication. Your power is encompassed in this degree because of your unfaltering commitment and value in the acquisition of your educational skills. Now is your time to utilize the skills learned in this institution and become the next generation of Medgar Evers College Ambassadors. Embrace your power. As an ambassador, you have a responsibility to enlighten those on your experience of attending one of the premier historically black college in the tri-state area and where the camaraderie that exists between the students and employees is like none other. You will never have another graduation experience like this one. This is your moment to shine as a beacon of light. Embrace your future. Exude passion in your interests. You are success waiting to prosper. In your future undertakings, immerse yourself in the experience. Never do things half-heartedly because it will show in the finished product. If you fully apply yourselves to anything, then you will do well and the outcome will exceed your expectations. If you know me, I'm that girl on campus who was always running around, always on the move, and that was because I wanted to maximize my full potential. Many of you have done similar activities, trying to reach the pinnacle of success, and for this, I commend you. By doing this, we have all watched ourselves evolve into well-rounded individuals. Remember, the size of your success is measured by the strength of your desire. Have a mentor or mentors. It is important to have someone whose advice you trust. Your mentor is that person who you connect with and in some ways hope to emulate their success with their guidance. My personal and professional mentors have supported me in my college years and will continue to do so. When it's possible, you must become a mentor. True wealth comes from the satisfaction of contributing to another's success. Remember, to whom much is given, much is expected. Don't be complacent. There are a myriad of opportunities that await you. Go after them. If your experiences during the last four years were only spent in the classroom and not with interactions with professors and other classmates through extracurricular and co-curricular activities, then you've missed out. I'm sorry to say that you've missed out on a lot. If you've been coming to Medgar for all these years and you've never been to the Office of Student Life except to pick up your graduation tickets, then probably you should stay another semester just to have that experience. Some of the best advice I've gotten has come from that office. Thank you, Kevin and Jeff. There are numerous dedicated faculty in this institution, and I extend my gratitude to them all on behalf of the graduates. If you have an opportunity, try to utilize whatever knowledge is available to you. As you prepare to go on to graduate school or start your career, Take advantage of every opportunity that is, prevent, that is presented to you. Embrace your passion. You can have, do, or be anything that you want. Your life is the end result of your thoughts. There are endless possibilities that awaits you because your future starts now. Can I have the graduate stand, please?
Repeat after me, please. I am empowered to do more, motivated to complain less, and most importantly, it is confirmed that I can, I will, and I must be successful. You can be seated. You are all a success waiting to be born. Love it. Embrace your power, your passion, and the endless opportunities that await you as a 2007 Medgar Evers College graduate. Thank you. Hello, all. You know, I had a few brief words for you because I know you've been out here a long time. But Kellyanne has said everything that I wanted to state. Basically, you all know the law of attraction, the secret which has been talked about so much recently. As you give out, you receive back. So as you venture into your different avenues in, after graduation, whether it be business, uh, graduate school, entrepreneur activities, remember, you must give out to receive back. I can ask you to please volunteer yourself to the Alumni Association. I see one day when all the students or the alumnus that were over here will be equal to the number of graduates. I ask that you come back with your skills, talents, abilities, and bring it back to Mega Everest College, because you know that this is the best place in the world. And don't forget, we remain here for you, we want to see you, and we want to work with you. So graduates, on behalf of the Mega Evers College Alumni Association, I salute and congratulate you all. And now, by the power vested in me, as the duly elected president of the Alumni Association, I hereby induct each and every one of you into the Alumni Association with all the rights and privileges pertaining thereto. By the way, this induction entitles you to a one-year free membership. So sign up, come to meetings, let me be able to communicate with you during this coming year. Thank you and congratulations. So it is my honor and privilege to say to all of you, thank you and graduates, please go forth and be great ambassadors for the Medgar Evers College. Now, as president of Medgar Evers College of the City University of New York, I declare the 36th commencement ceremony concluded. <laughs> Oh, you're back.